Hey, gun people. Man, this is a, it's a tough video here. So, I'm watching this movie, and I looked for some other movies that were equal this movie, and the Kill Team came up. And I went, Kill Team? And I read about it, and it said that um, a squad was killing innocent people in Afghanistan, and they get court-martialed or something to that effect. And I thought it was a Hollywood movie, and I said, oh, it's probably some left-wing thing. They're going to make the military look all bad. This is an actual event. This video is more of a documentary. It shows how he planned his defense. It shows the mother and father. It shows it takes actual statements from these guys. It shows the interviews. I think a really well-done movie. This is the uh, main character, Adam Winfield. He... Um, and maybe the other people aren't, maybe the other people that are playing these other people aren't them. I don't know. It says himself here. I didn't check for the other ones. But so this kid joins the military, wants to be a ranger, wants to go in at 17. His parents are like, man, you sure you don't want to wait? Well, nope. He wants to go in and be a ranger. He's 100 pounds. He can barely carry his rucksack. And he ends up passing and becoming, um, I think he's a ranger. And he gets assigned a squad in Afghanistan. Dude, this movie just... I don't want to spoil it. So if you want to go watch the movie or the, the, the show and you don't want to know what's happening, I'm going to give you the rundown kind of on what happened, how these guys end up in prison, and what got them there, and, and what I think is just a, a failure on the military and government to protect these young kids. Now, I know somebody's going to say that I'm being a whoopee, a wussy, and I'm... Uh, getting to my old age too sentimental and all. Look, man, I, military, we're all young when we go in there, but we need some old timers that keep us in check and don't, don't let us step on our dick too bad. So I think this guy was let down by a lot of people, but we're going to look at part of the movie and discuss some of the characters. I've never in a million years imagined I would be going to jail. After the first murder, everything that I believed in in the army was gone. People in my platoon, they just changed. Something in them changed. Okay, so in the movie, it shows this guy, he gets his squad, is cool, and then his sergeant gets his leg blown off from an ID, and they get a new squad leader. And the new squad leader is... This gentleman right here, Staff Sergeant, or I forgot his name, it'll come up in a minute. But uh, these are the other people involved in the squad. But the Staff Sergeant's name, I want to say, is uh, Gibbs, Gibbs or Griffin or something. So this squad leader who's been around for a while, he's been in others. That kind of looks like poppies in the middle of poppy field. All right, I, I digress. Anyway, so he comes over and he's got pictures of him killing other people. So he's kind of like the senior guy. And he's got all these young guys that he's impressing. Well, he ends up telling them how to kill people and how to set innocent Afghanis up. And by carrying drop weapons and drop grenades that they seize, and then they want to go out and shoot somebody. So they shoot and kill this dude in cold blood. When he dies, they th either throw out a grenade right before or right after. Say he had a grenade and they had to defend themselves and they kill the dude. Then they take pictures with him. And I think there's three different murders. At the end, it tells the three people that were murdered. And they all get end up charged. But this this guy in charge, man, he did some some dirty stuff. Rap. He wasn't afraid to change the tactics, bring the fight to us versus going looking for one that didn't exist. Other squad leaders follow the rules to a T. This is Mr. Gibbs. He's a squad leader. He's the one that had tattoos on his legs for everyone he killed. He also kept the fingers of people he killed and wrapped them up and carried them around with him. And after the skin would rot away with the bones, his plan was to make a necklace of all the fingers of all the people he killed. So, uh, and he was in the, I forgot the numbers to the Mountain Division, but I don't see a Ranger tab on these guys. Maybe they're not Rangers. Uh, I don't want to disparage the Rangers because I like the Rangers. I've worked with them before. And oh, he's got a Ranger tab over here. So I think they were, I thought they said they were Rangers. So, uh, anyway, this guy is really the ringleader, and, I mean, I'm telling you, man, this movie is sad the way it ends up. 
Gibbs was a much different story. Odds are you work for him, you're probably gonna come back in one piece. Or you could work for the guy who follows the rules and get your ass blown up. He never talked to me about what he did in Iraq. I did see his tattoos. He was sitting there working out and I was like, schools, you know, that's, that's cool, what does it mean? You know, I didn't get an answer from him, but I asked someone else a little later on, they're like, oh, this is the dudes he's killed. So the, the sergeant that was put in charge, a staff sergeant in front of all these young guys, whoever his boss was, supervision, they should have been charged. But as usual in the military, when they get caught doing something, they always go down to the low guys. So they end up charging privates, petty officers, corporals, and this staff sergeant is the highest ranking dude that got charged. They killed several people. I mean, it was just freaking crazy. So this is his attorney. I think he's a Marine. I don't know if he retired Marine or not, but he's an attorney that's defending this guy. In essence, the same people that determine who will hear the case, who will be the jury, and who will hand down the decision for sentencing. They are the judge and jury. Okay, this is the kid's mom who tried to report it. Before all this went down, this kid sent letters to his mom and dad and said, hey, they're killing people here, and they want me to kill innocent people, and I don't want to do it. And I thought the Army had honor. And the kid was reaching out for help and trying to get help, and nobody would listen. His dad got on the phone, called a congressman, called the inspector general, called the guy in charge of the command. Nobody returned his call. He got one person that he could talk to, and the guy goes, hey, it's his word against the others. Uh, unless he gets two people to come forward, there's nothing we can do. They wouldn't open an investigation. They wouldn't do anything. This squad ends up putting a kill order on him. The the sergeant says, we're going to kill you. They end up beating up one of the other guys because he turns them in because he don't want to smoke hash, and they're all smoking hash. So they beat him up. When he has to go to the, the infirmary because he's all beat up, he tells them, yeah, my squad beat me up because I didn't want to do hash. Well, that started an investigation, and then it led to, oh, these people are killing people. Even though the other kid tried to tell him, what do they do? They charge this young kid with murder. And then in the end, they end up putting him down as a uh, charging him with being a coward because he didn't stop these people from killing these innocent people. And they gave him a max of eight years and he ended up getting three years. Just a horrible story. This kid really looked like he was trying to do the right thing. Nobody would help him. Uh, they were going to kill him. They threatened him. His squad wouldn't stand up against the squad leader. Nobody would stand up. They beat up the other dude because he wouldn't do hash. I mean, if you want to watch a good movie about the fog of war, where things get... I mean, these kids give some really straight-up interviews about, you know what, the military charges us to kill. We're all told to kill. We go over there and we kill, and then they act like they're upset. And I kind of want to go, dude, they train you to kill the enemy. So this is CID right here in the lower left-hand corner here of interviewing him. So they show some actual footage of that. Um, I mean, these are all the different squad leaders that they're interviewing. If you watch the little square that I'm moving along here. Um, these are pictures with some of the Afghanis that they're they're going for. These are the text right here. Um where he was texting his dad, asking for help, saying, what do I do? Uh, dad, I don't know what to do. Nobody's listening to me. Now they're going to kill. The kid had to go see a shrink. He the, he had to sleep with a gun, carry a knife, because these other team members go, yo, man, I think Gibbs is going to kill you. And Gibbs told him flat out, dude, I'll kill you and throw you in a ditch and cut you up. And nobody will find you. Uh so this is his sister and his dad at the range because they were getting death threats when this came out that his son was involved in this kill team in Afghanistan. Uh, it goes through. That's one of the guys that they killed. They give the names. Um, I mean, such a sad story. But I think it's worth watching. Um, I think at the end here they, they put who um, everyone that was convicted the sergeant in charge, he ends up getting life. Everyone else gets anywhere from 15 to 3 years. 11 soldiers were convicted of the kill team trials. Um, pretty good movie. I, I think it's worth watching. I, I just want to talk about it and kind of give you my input on 
how the military just throws away kids that go over there and want to give it their all. They want to defend their country. I mean, listen to this kid talk about how he was proud to go fight for his country and have honor. And when he saw this and nobody would listen and he was, he couldn't turn them in and they were brothers and he, and it was his only family he had over there. And, and they all got caught up and he didn't think other people want to do it, but nobody would. I mean, it was just a horrible situation, man. I, uh, I found it pretty sad, uh, that the kid couldn't get help, but you know what? Nobody wants to be, this is him when he went in the military where he was a hundred pounds. <laughs> um, anyway, Kill Team. It's on Amazon. Uh, it's free. Uh, I think it's a pretty good documentary. I know I'm going to get some other reviews. I was talking to Buck about it. Buck's like, I don't care. They all should have went to prison. If they're out there killing people, tough luck. And I, I'm just, I'm just more kind of like, you know what? You got young kids thrown into a high risk, high death. Watching their buddies get blown up. Not a lot of life experience. They look to the older season guys for guidance. They look for them. They know that they're going to hopefully keep them alive. And they follow their lead. And then nobody keeps those guys in check. So you let one guy set up a whole squad to go to prison. Because they want to be a team player. They didn't want to be a snitch. They didn't want to be a whistleblower. Uh, this is the kid's dad that went to uh, prison. But anyway... If you want to watch it, I thought I'd share. I think it's a pretty good movie. Got some good lessons in it. Uh, you can discuss it in the comments on whether you agree with me or think I'm being a softy or thinking, you know, um, people in war ought to be so perfect and straight and it shouldn't offend them and they should be professional and they should just up two, three, four and then go help, go along with their life and forget everything they've seen and everything they've done and mistakes that people make. I mean, if these guys had made the mistake and killed somebody... I wouldn't have so much of a problem, but this sergeant was literally like, okay, we found somebody, you know, and then they talk about how the family comes out crying and saying he wasn't doing anything. And then they take pictures with them after they're dead and they go back and tell all their buddies, yeah, man, we killed this dude. He had a grenade and we shot him. We, he was a target and they all got high fived and it was cool because they lived and they were all team members and everything was cool. And I'm just telling you, man, when you get that power and it's unchecked, it's just a dangerous combination, people. And those without power will never see it. Those who haven't worked with the people with power have never seen it. And those that haven't worked with the power to take life and to put people in prison and to set people up and to have the protection of the government when you do things, man, those people with power, it's so easy to cross over to the dark side. But it's my opinion. All righty, we'll end that there.